Hello, hello everyone, my name is Laura, this is my channel Laura's Little Library, and welcome to today's video, which is my April wrap-up. So I read 11 books in the month of April. It was another kind of slower month for me i just i have so much on my plate but you know 11 books is still pretty good and for the most part i'm really happy with what i read it was definitely like a four star month i would say i had only one five star this month and it was actually a reread which i don't ever reread books so the fact that i wanted to do a reread and that this book maintained its five star writing it kind of blows my mind i'm really happy about it though and that was the bromance book club by lissa k adams so at the beginning of april was the beginning of baseball season and i was just in such a baseball mood and in a romance mood so this was like the baseball romance that i have and that i love so i went back and reread this i still give it five stars i still love everything about it. I have a different kind of appreciation for everything that happened happened, and uh, all the character relationships and now having read like the other four books. <laughs> but yeah, like reading it first, reading it last, it's still a five star book for me. Then I had a whole bunch of four star books. So let's get started on those. First one I would love to talk about is Vera Wong's Unsolicited Advice for Murderers. This is by Jesse Q. Sutanto. This is her newest book that has just been released. We follow Vera Wong, who is this old Chinese lady living in Chinatown and who owns a tea house. And then one day she wakes up and finds a dead body on the floor of her tea house. And so she takes it upon herself to solve the murder. I, okay, so I have read other books by Jessie Q. Sutanto, and I know that she has a hilarious murdery, murder mystery writing style. Like, Dial A for Aunties, I absolutely loved, but this was only 4.5 out of 5 stars because there were so many POVs, and I wish I had gotten just more from Vera's point of view and more of the comedic moments of Vera trying to solve this crime. Don't get me wrong, I loved the found family elements that were in this book and the relationship between characters was amazing and they were such complex characters that, like Vera, I grew to love. But I still, I think the beginning was like the funny part and I wish it had been maintained a little bit better through the book. But otherwise, 4.5, I absolutely adored this. Oh my goodness, it is so good. You should definitely pick this up. Then another four star book that I read this month was The Fountains of Science by Ruta Sepetys. This is actually my first Ruta Sepetys book, but I have a lot of her books on my TBR. Like I want to read all of her historical fiction because she tends to write from a different perspective or not just World War II. So The Fountains of Science actually takes place during the Spanish Civil War and it is kind of going back and forth between a Spanish woman who is trying to protect her family and an American man who his mom is from Spain and he goes to Spain and he's trying to uh, win this photography contest about and show the true Spain during the Civil War. So it was very heartfelt, very touching. I had a few like little things like what kind of ending is this? This is a little ridiculous what's happening between characters. Um, but overall, it was still like very heartwarming, still like kept my attention going. Cause again, it's a, it's a little bit of a chunkier historical fiction. Um, so the fact that I was able to just flip through it and read it so quickly definitely was a bonus. And then another 4.5 star read. I am so happy that this book was a 4.5 star read. I was so nervous to read it. I knew I'd either hate it or I would love it. And that is Rise of the Snake Goddess by Jenny Elder Moak. So this is the second book in the Samantha Knox series. It came out like last year or something. And the first book underwhelmed me. I was disappointed by it. So I was really nervous to read this one 
because I desperately wanted this book to be better. For the most part, it was. The writing was much better. The plot was so much better. I, I was, all the critiques I had of the first book were significantly better in this book. However, what stopped it from being a five star read for me was the relationship between Sam and Bennett, the romance. I felt like the entire book, they were just kind of on edge and I didn't feel any chemistry there. Not like the first book where there was chemistry. There was just zero chemistry between the characters. Even when they are disagreeing, there was nothing between them. And it made me really sad because I was like, oh, I'm losing the relationship here. So that was the only disappointment for this one. But I really hope more of these books keep coming out because I cannot wait to see or to read the next adventure. I did also read the next Sarah J Mass book in April. I'm doing a whole separate vlog for that, so I won't talk about it here but I did also rate that book four stars. Comment down below if you have any guesses what book I'm at in the series that I rated four stars. Moving on, I then read A Magic Steeped in Poison by Judy I. Lin. This is an Asian-inspired fantasy where basically your magic system is people who prepare tea also kind of do magic and they're kind of fused together. She has magical properties, but also you're the one who is doing the magic, but you can only do it through tea. But also tea is tea and you can add things to it for different properties, you know, kind of like how we have tea now of like um, sleepy time tea or like throat coat, you know, we have different teas to help along with different things. It's that idea, but also with magic infused. So our main character has a younger sister who has fallen ill to this mysterious poisonous plague that is kind of spreading through the land a little bit. So she enters in the competition to be the next like magic tea person for the Empress. And it is very much like that. I, I would say like, again, it's a four, almost 4.5 out of five stars. It's the first book in a duology. I cannot wait to read the second one. And the romance in here, I admire how it was done. I truly do. So, very happy I got around to reading this because it was on my spring TBR and it's almost the end of spring. I also read Delicious Monsters and this was actually a book club book. And honestly, this was probably more of like a 3.5 rather than 4. Just because like, there was so much thrown into this book and some of it was unclear. I like, I like all the different elements, but just the way they tied together was a little fuzzy and I think could have been executed a little bit better and the writing could have been a little bit better. And you're following two POVs and the crossover characters can be a little confusing between the two, but it was still like a good book. It was still thoroughly creepy. There are a lot of trigger warnings though, so just if you are sensitive to certain subject matters such as sexual abuse or emotional abuse, maggots, body horror, like sacrificing animals, there's a lot. So just look up the trigger warnings before you look into this book. Yeah, there is just so much thrown at us and I, like I said, I liked all the different elements of it. It just was a lot and it was all very creepy but it also like made sense because there are some things that felt like oh it's supposed to be a big reveal but i also kind of just figured that's what it would be so there were some surprises and some non-surprises and some that were like i figured it out which was a surprise and then it was revealed later so then it wasn't a surprise but it's still pretty good you like haunted house stories this would be a good one. Another 3.5 out of 5 star book that I read was Daughter of the Moon Goddess. This is by Su Lin Ten. I also read Heart of the Sun Warrior, which is the second book in this duology. So I read an entire duology this month. That's super exciting for me. Yay! But I mean, they were both kind of like 3 star. For me, what it was with these books was that there were certain parts of it that I loved. Like I loved kind of the middle of this one. And then Heart of the Sun Warrior, I loved 
really just kind of like the beginning and the other parts I was like this is slow or boring or I don't quite see how this connects or how it's important to the story um, but overall it is a beautiful like lyrically written book about the daughter of the moon goddess who is trying to set her mother free so she enters in a competition in order to study with the prince study magic so that she can then gain the skills that she needs to figure out how to set her mother free. Lots of different um, mythological, fantastical elements. Again, really love this Chinese mythology. It just, the writing had some fuzzy spots for me, but overall, really good. I'm really happy that I read both books in the duology, so fun. And also, I didn't hate the love triangle. I mean, I didn't like it, but I didn't hate it. Now the last three star book I read was Beasts of Ruin by Ayana Gray. This is the second book after Beasts of Prey. And the second book in the trilogy, we're still waiting on the third one. I think it's like Beasts of War or something. It kind of lost me for a bit. I loved the first book for like the first two thirds. And then when it kind of started getting into the bigger plot and everything behind it all, it kind of lost me. And with this book, I was bored. It was putting me into a slump. I was not motivated to read this until I hit probably two thirds of the way through, like 60 to 70%, maybe more like, of the way through. Then I became invested. I became reinvested in the characters and in the plot. I just think that we backtracked so much with what was happening or just kind of what we needed to know. It was almost like we just ditched majority of the first book and just went with the second half of the first book and like it was a weird switch so yeah I had a hard time with this one I I think I'll read the third one when it comes out but I really hope it's better otherwise this is just going to be like a mediocre trilogy which you know isn't bad but like for the size it is I wish it had been better it could have been it could have been so much shorter then the final book that I read in the month of April and my only two star this month was The Wicked Remain by Laura Pohl. So this is the second book in the Grimrose Girls duology. I read the first one and I liked it more than enough. Like I, I enjoyed the concept of it. I just wish that I had, I don't know, it didn't quite give me everything I was hoping for. Kind of the same with this one. Like it had the ending was like one of those like oh you would never see it coming but at the same time I was like really that's what we're doing here it was it was very disappointing there are a lot of things about this book that was disappointing and it just left me feeling like kind of annoyed and just like okay well it's done I finished it especially for the idea of it being a fairy tale based dark academia in Europe, like there were just so many possibilities and so much potential there. And I feel like it just didn't go in the best direction that it could have. So it was a two star. All right, so those are the 11 books I read in the month of April. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Otherwise, feel free to subscribe and hit the bell so that you're notified when I post. For the next couple months, I'm just going to be going down to posting one video a week because I will be insanely busy and also not in my home country for two months. So I'm going to go down to one video a week, but so subscribe and hit the bell so you're notified when that video goes up. Otherwise, I do also have bookish social media linked down below. You can keep up with me and what I'm doing there. And while you're down there, comment down below highlights of your April reading month. What was the Sarah J Mass book that you think I rated four stars? What was your favorite read or your least favorite read? Anything like that. But yeah, until I see you all in the next video, I wish you happy reading.